Hi, and welcome to Shelter Rock Church. My name is Liz Tillinghast. I'm the Kids Ministry Director over at our West Ferry campus, and we are so excited that you're joining us for worship today. If you're joining us for the first or second time, we'd love to invite you to fill out our Connect card. This is a great way for us to get to know you and to kind of help you plug in with all the different events and groups that we offer here at our church family. You can find the link to that in our bio. Now, as we welcome spring, I can't help thinking about the fact that God reminds us in his word that we can be made new. We can be transformed. We are a new life in him. And it's through Jesus that this is possible. And so as we celebrate Palm Sunday and we say Hosanna and celebrate the coming of a promised savior, I invite you to think about the fact that we are welcoming a God who brings renewal and restoration and transformation and brings us salvation. Let's read together from Matthew 21 that says, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We welcome Jesus, our King. Let's stand up and worship him now. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, Lord. You come to worship and adore your wonderful name, God. We love you. Raise up a holy sound from east 
So 
amen and amen. Let's listen to this video with some upcoming announcements. Hey, Shelter Rock Church family, and happy Palm Sunday to you and to yours. It's good to be with you today. In just a few moments, we're going to move into our teaching time, and we're going to look at one of the greatest passages where Jesus invites all who are weary to come to him and find rest. And as I think about that, I'm just reminded that Jesus often speaks in this invitational way. He invites all of us to come to him, to take a seat at his table. Uh, he invites us far and wide to draw near to him. And it is with this invitational spirit that I want to invite you to come join us on Friday at any of our campuses for our Good Friday service as we worship and reflect and remember the cross of Christ and all that it means for us today. I also want to invite you to come join us. I want to invite you to invite others to join us on Easter Sunday. We're going to gather together next week at the Tilla Center. If you go to your local campus, you'll be alone. We will be at the Tilla Center. Come join us. You're invited and bring others with you as we remember the resurrection. The women weren't lying. The tomb really was empty and it has profound implications for you and me today. And lastly, if you're just like on a journey of faith, you're not sure like what you believe and why, you're exploring some of the hard questions of Christianity, I want to invite you, if you've never done it before, to take the Alpha course with us. It's going to begin shortly after Easter, about a week or so later. And to tell you more about Alpha and what you can expect, watch this. Let's be honest, life is busy. Every day we ask ourselves questions like, what's happening today? What should I wear? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are bigger questions like, why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? These are some of life's biggest questions, but rarely do we get the opportunity and time to think them through, let alone talk through them with other people. That's why we have Alpha. At each of our in-person Alpha sessions, we have a free dinner that we provide, which is always a great time for everyone to get to know each other in a casual setting. Next, together you'll watch an Alpha Talk, which are videos that explore big issues around faith with Jesus. And lastly, there's a time for discussion, which is the best part. It allows everyone the opportunity to share their own opinions in response to the talk. It's a time for people with different thoughts, beliefs, and experiences to ask honest questions and have open conversation in a safe environment without feeling judged. There is no pressure and no follow-up, and it's completely free to attend. I've personally heard so many testimonies from people who have taken Alpha, and some have taken it many times actually, and it really changed their lives, and they've made lifelong friendships in the process. Well, I'm sure you're curious about how you can sign up for Alpha. Register at shelterrockchurch.com slash groups for details about Alpha near you. Here at Shelter Rock Church, we view the act of giving as an act of worship in itself. And we invite you, if you call Shelter Rock Church your family, to join us in giving because this helps us to carry out God's mission, not only in our community, but globally as well. So we thank you for your generosity because it allows us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. There are three ways that you can join us in giving. In person, on our Shelter Rock Church app, or on our website, shelterrockchurch.com give. We thank you again for your generosity. Now let's get ready to continue our sermon series titled Take Heart. Pastor Henry will be sharing his sermon called Come to Me where he'll be teaching us about Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Join me now in our scripture reading. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. 
Hey, Shelter Rock Church, and happy Palm Sunday to you and to your families today. Uh, my name is Henry, and I'm one of our pastors on staff, and it's a great gift to be with you uh, celebrating who Jesus is and what he has done 2,000 years ago as we move into Holy Week and we remember his triumphal entry today where he set his face to go to the cross, to go to Calvary, where he would voluntarily lay down his life for you and for me. And three days later, God would raise him from the dead. The tomb would be empty. And God's new world would have broken in through the empty tomb of the resurrection of Jesus. Everything that we talk about from this Sunday to next Sunday, it literally is the week that changed the world. And for us as a community, it gives us so much reason to take heart, to take heart into who Jesus is and because of what Jesus has done. And we hope you'll come on out on Good Friday and Easter Sunday and continue to celebrate with us as we remember and reflect the good news of the gospel and all that is core to what we believe. But today, as we continue our teaching time, we're going to reflect on the two passages you just heard. Uh, The first passage is the triumphal entry when Jesus enters into Jerusalem and he comes gently and he comes humble. He comes riding on a donkey. He is the king who has come to us. He comes to us. But he's also a king who comes like no other, right? Herod, uh, Pilate, these other like Roman rulers, they would ride around on a war horse to intimidate the Jewish people, But the Messiah comes, he doesn't come like they come. And in fact, he doesn't come in the way even the Jewish people expect. He comes humble and gentle, not to conquer their enemies, but to be conquered by their enemies and to lay down his life for you and for me. And he is a king who we can come to in our time of need, a king who can empathize with us in our weakness, a king who has overcome the powers of death, the powers of darkness, a king who has overcome all, a king who has come for us and a king who's come like no other. And it is this king, this king who enters into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, this king who would go to a cross and lay down his life for all of our sins, this king who would conquer the grave, And emerge victoriously. It is this king who says these words. These words that we read in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. I want you to hear these words. And I want to invite us to receive these words from King Jesus today. Listen to him. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. This is King Jesus who invites us to come and experience the rest that only he can give. I wonder, are you weary today? Are you feeling burdened today? Are you feeling like there's the weight of the world on your shoulders? Do you feel the weight of responsibility? Do you feel the weight of, um, of life? Do you feel the weight of the world? Do you feel the weight of all the things you carry day in and day out? Are you feeling the weight? Are you feeling the burden? Uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spiritual burden. You're, you're feeling the, the weight of, of like living the life God has called you to live. Or you, you, maybe it's a financial burden. You're feeling the weight of, of trying to get into a better position. You're feeling maybe a, a, a relational burden. There's, there's someone in your life, a relationship, a marriage, a child, a friend, a family member. You're feeling the weight of all of that. Maybe it's life that has thrown some extra weight on top of you today. Maybe it's a sickness Maybe it's an illness. Maybe it's an unanswered prayer. And you're walking around today, or you're sitting and watching, but you're you're really like feeling this extra weight on top of you. 
You know, I often feel that weight, the weight of responsibility, the weight of burden, the weight of the things entrusted to me. I feel that weight. And when I think about feeling that weight and feeling that burden, I, I, I think of like how some of us, we really try and carry those burdens alone. We try and carry those burdens on our own strength and our own ability. We try and function like we are like the world's strongest man, woman, or child. We try and hold up our own weight. And I'm thinking about that for, so, for a moment. So, so just work, work with me here. Think of this image. Think of what it would be like to take some weight. And this is not a lot of weight. This is just like 35 pounds. But imagine carrying a weight like this wherever you go. Uh, there's a competition every year called the World's Strongest Man. And they have all sorts of competitions. And one of their competitions is something called, uh, it, it's, it's like the, the heavy yoke or like the, the yoke contest. And what they do is they have these big, huge, like strong guys. And they, they carry like weight on their shoulders like they were yoked. And, and there's a guy named Brian Shaw. He's the world's strongest man. And he, he in this competition, he carries 1,300 pounds and, and the competition is you got to carry 1,300 pounds. This is just 35, and by the way, I'm getting a little tired. But imagine carrying 1,300 pounds on your shoulders. And all they have to do is they have to walk 13 feet. But as you see him walk with all of this weight, he takes these small little baby steps forward. He's just like barely moving at all. Because it's easy to walk 13 feet unless you're carrying a huge weight on you. And I didn't want to put a lot of weight on this bar, but I can tell you, like, I don't know, like, if I could carry this and hold it for the whole sermon. And yet there are so many of us carrying this kind of weight and so much more throughout our day. And so if you're here today and you're watching today and you're tuned in today and metaphorically, like, like life has put some weight on your shoulders and you're beginning to feel it. I want you to just hear Jesus' invitation for those of us who are carrying burdens. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. It's a universal invitation. And he says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There are three things I want us to see in the text today. Three invitations from Jesus. And it's an invitation that goes out to anyone and everyone that's feeling weary and burdened today. The first is to come to Jesus. Jesus says, come to me. It's an invitation for us to come to Jesus. The second thing we see in the text, second invitation, is he says, learn from me. We're, we are invited, all of us, to to come under the teaching of Jesus and to learn from him, to learn a new and better way. And then he says, rest in me, right? You will find rest for your souls. Rest is available for you and me. We can rest in Jesus. So those three things, we're invited to come to Jesus. We are invited to learn from Jesus and we are all invited to rest in Jesus. First, we're invited to come to Jesus. This is how it starts. He, Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. The, in the ancient world, it was an agrarian culture. In fact, as Jesus is writing and he's, and he's teaching and he's speaking and um, you know, as he's living, it's an agrarian society in the first century in Jewish Palestine. And in that culture, they would have understood the metaphor right away, right? Take my yoke upon you. A yoke would have been something like the bar I just held up a moment ago, except this bar would have been placed like on a beast of burden. And it was something that would be placed on a beast of burden on their neck so that they could then walk like straight and steady down the row and be able to like plow the land in front of them. And so what you would do is you, you would take a, an animal, uh, like an oxen or something like this, and you would put a yoke on them. But you wouldn't yoke them alone. It's not like you just put like one yoke on one animal. Normally, you'd yoke two together. And so you'd have two animals like yoked together with a bar across both of them. So they're latched in and they're tied to one another. And together, they would walk side by side and walk straight down a path. And this is kind of the image. 
right? This is kind of the image. Many of us, we're like carrying yokes all by ourselves, and we're feeling the weight. We're feeling the burden. But Jesus says, come to me. Take my yoke upon you. What's he saying? He says, I want you to, I want you to come alongside me, and I want you to walk beside me. So, you know, I'm going to ask for help. Josh, would you, would you come out here real quick? Josh is over here. Josh is our, um, he's one of our video producers, and he didn't know I was going to do this, but Josh, get over here. Josh is, you know, Josh is a strong guy, right? So the idea is that together, it feels lighter now that you're here, we'd be able to walk this path together. All right, Josh, good job. Thank you very much, my friend. And that's the idea, right? It's not that we carry the weight and Jesus comes with us, but that Jesus carries the weight and we walk with him. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. We're to take off the yoke that we are carrying and come along and carry the yoke of Jesus and to let Jesus carry the weight for us as we walk through life with him. And notice I want you to say, uh, to see this, he says, come to me. Jesus says, come to to me. And this makes the point very clear that like, like to be a Christian does not mean that we just ascribe to a certain set of beliefs and values or that we adhere to a certain list of spiritual practices. No, no. To be a Christian is fundamentally, first and foremost, about coming to Jesus. It's about being in a relationship with a person. It's about being in a loving, trusting, caring relationship with Jesus. Right? And of course, when you're in a loving, caring, trusting relationship with Jesus, it includes understanding the sets of beliefs and values and adhering to certain practices. But, but being a Christian foremost is an invitation to a person and to a personal relationship with Christ. Notice Jesus doesn't say, first memorize the catechism, then you can come to me. No, he says, come to me. He doesn't say, first clean yourself up all and get, yourself, get your life in order, then come to me. No, no, he just says, first come to me. Jesus doesn't say, I need you to first like, like make sure you're, you're praying and you're meditating and you're reading your Bible and you're fasting and you're, you have everything in order first and then you can come to me. No, no, he says, first, come to me. The invitation for us today, if we are weary and heavy burdened by sin, by guilt, by shame, by life, is to come to Jesus, to come to King Jesus and experience the rest that only he can give. The first invitation from Jesus is to come to Jesus. And the second thing we see in our text is not only are we invited to come to Jesus, but we're invited to learn from Jesus. I want you to see this. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Jesus makes it clear that to be in a relationship with him, to be yoked with him, to be walking with him, to be a disciple of his, to be a student of his, is to be someone who is learning from him. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Right? I'm gentle and I'm humble of heart. Right? Like the way of Jesus, the way Jesus lives, the way Jesus walks, the way Jesus functions, the way, the way Jesus is, is just so different than the way we are and the ways of our world. There are some things that we have to unlearn and be unformed so that we can then relearn and be reformed into the way of Jesus. The invitation is to come and learn from him. And that word learn in the New Testament, uh, it's the word methete. Mathete. It's where we get the word mathematics, right? Or math, right? Uh, it's a word that means to learn. And what's interesting is that word mathete, which means to learn, it's actually related to the word for disciple, which is the Greek word methetes, right? So you can see that, like to be a disciple of Jesus is to be one who learns from Jesus, to be a student of Jesus, to be someone who's being formed uh, intellectually by the renewing of our mind into the ways of the world of Jesus, right? Right, to learn 
from me, uh, to learn the way of, of self-denial, to learn the way of surrender, to learn the way of sacrifice, to learn the way of humility, to, to learn the way of meekness, right? We live in a world that values so many things that are contrary to the will and to the way of God. Jesus saying, if you're going to come into union with me, if you're going to be yoked with me, if you're going to be in relationship with me, you need to learn from me. You need to learn from me. And this is why looking even at Jesus on Palm Sunday, coming in gentle and humble and riding on a donkey. Here is someone whose heart broke for the least of these. Here is someone who said, if you want to be great, you got to be the least. If you want to be the ruler of all, you need to be the servant of all. Here is one who humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The way of Jesus is so different, so utterly different than the way you and I operate. If we're going to be in relationship with him, we need to learn from him and submit to his authority in our lives. As I was thinking this week about what does it mean to learn from Jesus, I realized I have a lot to learn. Like, I'm always reminded I have a lot to learn from Jesus. And I was reading uh, this week just in the Gospel of Luke, and I'll just share you, with you one passage where, as I was reading it, I thought, wow, like Jesus and I are pretty different. Like, I have a lot to learn. Here's what it says. It says in, in Luke 5, verse 15, it says, Yet the news about him, about Jesus, spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Think about it for a moment, right? Like, the text is telling us, Luke is telling us that the news about Jesus is spreading everywhere. That crowds of people are hearing about Jesus all over the place. And that tons of people are coming to Jesus to be healed of all their sicknesses. And in response to this great like awareness of who he is and what he can do, and the crowds of people, in, in, in response to this, Jesus withdrew to lonely places, to solitary places, to pray. And I'm reminded that, like, if this were happening with me, I'll just here's a moment of honesty. If this is happening with us, like, and everyone was like, 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 news about like Shelter Rock Church was like spreading all the more, and and like crowds of people are coming, and tons of people, like, like the very first thing we would do, I think, like, even our board of elders and our staff and our leadership, we'd be like, wow, there's like, like hundreds of thousands of people coming and mobbing like like we need bigger space and, and we would begin to expand and be like okay well you know what forget the Tiller Center next week we're going to do Nassau Coliseum like like news about us is spreading and people are coming to to hear the good news to hear the gospel to be healed of their sickness to be healed of Jesus. like we need to figure out a way to accommodate all these people coming to us and Jesus doesn't do that instead Jesus says oh crowds of people here I need to go all, all alone and be alone with my father out there. And I'm just reminded that like, like Jesus, he knew that to sustain his work for God, he needed to have time alone with God. That he needed to spend time with God to sustain his ministry for God and, 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 like, and in God's name and all of this. And like, like how many of us, we just like respond to the needs of in front of us with such human thinking and yet so contrary to the way of Jesus. So whether we're talking about silence or solitude or prayer or meditation or fasting or all of these things that Jesus does that we don't do, in a moment of honesty, I think we can all admit like we have so much to learn in the way of Jesus. And yet Jesus is willing to teach us. He's eager to teach us, which is why he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You and I, we can, we can come to Jesus. We are invited to, to learn from Jesus. And lastly, we're invited to rest in Jesus, to come and find rest for our souls. It says, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you and I, when we come to Jesus, we will find rest. And not just rest for our bodies, like our physical bodies. Which like, like we know our physical bodies need rest. But he's talking about like, like a deep, inner 
like internal and eternal rest for our souls because his yoke is not heavy and his burden is light. And the only reason, I hope you know this today, and this is my heart that we would all know this today, the only reason that Jesus can say to us, take my yoke upon you, like carry it, wear it, like you're going to find rest, is because he took all the weight himself. Like he gives us the easy yoke because he took on the hard yoke. He gives us the easy yoke, the light yoke that we can carry because he took the full weight of all our sin and all our guilt and all our shame and he bore it on his body on the tree. The only reason we have an easy yoke is because Jesus had a heavy cross. And because the weight of the cross and the weight of our sin and our shame was on his shoulders, and because he carried our sins on his own body on the tree, and because he was there instead of us, and because he was there on behalf of us, and because he was there so that we then could experience the forgiveness and the freedom and the mercy and grace of God, because he carried the weight you and I can have rest for our souls. And my hope, my prayer, our hope, our prayer is that each and every one of us would be a people that come to Jesus, that learn from Jesus, and that because of the good news of the gospel of grace, find rest in Jesus. You don't have to carry a heavy yoke on your own. No, Jesus carried it all on the cross for you and for me. I'm reminded of um, John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. It's a famous book, well-known book. Maybe you're familiar with it. Next to the Bible, I think like the number two most sold book of all time. If you haven't read it, you should read it. It's a Christian allegory. John Bunyan wrote it while he was in prison. And the story opens with a guy, his name's Christian. He's got a backpack on him and it's a burden. And, he, and no matter what he does throughout all his journeys, he just can't get it off. He can't take the weight off. It's like he's carrying this heavy weight. And no matter where he goes, it's weighing him down. And it isn't until the very end of the story when he comes to the cross of Jesus Christ and under the shadow of the cross as he walks up the hill, as soon as he gets in the shadow of it, the backpack, the burden that he's been carrying all along that can never get rid of, all of a sudden, it just falls off and rolls down the hill. And actually, this is what's available for each and every one of us today. If we're carrying our sin, we're carrying our guilt, we're carrying our shame, we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, all we have to do is bring it to Jesus, lay our sins at the cross, and just leave them there. Carry them there and leave them there. Because we know that when we come to the cross, he carried it all for you and for me. King Jesus, come to Jesus. Learn from Jesus. Find rest in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I pray that each of us individually and collectively, we would be a people that do not try and summon our own strength or our own ability, but that we would look to the one who comes in gentle and humble on a donkey on Palm Sunday, to the one who would go right to the cross, who would uh, endure its pain, endure the scorn, endure the shame, who would be ridiculed, who would be mocked, who would be spat on, who would have a crown of thorns on his head, who would willingly and voluntarily lay down his life. And as you were being killed, crying out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we know that forgiveness that was available for those who crucified you, Jesus, is available for us as well. Because as Luther said, we we carry your nails in our pockets, Lord. We, 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 We too put you there. And yet, Lord, we know that three days later you were victorious. And so we humbly come before you as your people. We come to you. We're eager to learn from you. And Jesus, we want to find our rest in you. Do this work in us and through us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we close our time together, we're going to come to the Lord's table. And I invite you to to grab your elements, to grab the cracker or the juice, the water, whatever you've set aside, and to take a moment and to consider all that it costs Jesus to offer us this rest that we can have in him. 
the scripture says that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he says, this cup is the new covenant, which is in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's worship him. We hope that you found this message encouraging, and we want to invite you to fill out our prayer request card. We have a team of prayer warriors that are ready to pray for all of your requests. And so you can find the link to this card in our bio. And we want to thank you once again for joining us today, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye!